Today on Women in What We Do, we feature a mother and daughter duo. They are both strong women in our community who do amazing things. I look forward to hearing their heartfelt story. I'm your host, Mary Brucker, and welcome. So I would like to welcome today to the show, Miss Sierra Ortiz and her beautiful mother, Miss Deborah Flores. Hi, ladies. Good afternoon. <laughs> we are so happy that you are here. Um, I, I really want to dive into your stories right away. Um, Sierra, you and I have talked about your amazing mom for quite some time. I think it's really important for you to tell me and to tell her a little bit about what you feel about your mom. All right, I'm already getting emotional. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Um, thank you for having us. Um, I was really looking forward to this one. So, you know, the background that I like to bring up and mention is that my grandparents were migrant workers. They worked really hard. It's okay. To give their children the life that they knew that they deserved. And my mom took that and she ran with it. Just absolutely phenomenal. She was working at the University of Toledo when she had me, and she was a single mom raising me, and she continued to advance her career, and I remember being a young girl sitting quietly in rooms where she was having meetings. I learned how to conduct myself, how to listen, how to be patient, how to watch her example of leadership, being a strong woman, a minority woman and seeing what's possible if you just keep your head down and don't listen to no. So what I remember most is going to all these different banquets and eating the good dinners. <laughs> 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 because she is a recipient of 20 Under 40. She is a recipient of YWCA's Milestone Awards. Um, she also had a big duty to be a judge for the Jefferson Awards. And the reason that she was able to be recognized that way is because she had a mentor. She had a couple mentors. And I'm so blessed, and we're so blessed, that one of our really good family friends, Margarita De Leon, she is so well known as a diversity DEI consultant. She's worked in over 20 countries, and she's just someone to celebrate. And she's a family friend. Um, we go to concerts to see her brother performing in his orchestra and we have fun and we see what it means to work hard and play harder enjoy your life enjoy this beautiful life that we've been given that we don't take for granted she has a lot of different projects that she's kind of taken on and created and I really want her to talk a little bit more about her fatherhood project that she did and what why she was inspired to do that do you want to talk a little bit about that well first of all why are you so emotional the second I asked you about your mom? It's been rough. You know, she was a single mom, and she always had my best intentions at heart. But when you're a young kid and you want to do something or you don't want to do something and you're told to do the opposite, it's frustrating. And, you know, she recognized what it means to make decisions that will make yourself proud in the future. And in the moment, it's hard to see that and it's hard to live in a single income household. And it's hard to be away from your mom when she's studying and when she's going to conferences for work and staying with your grandparents who I'm so close to. That's why I'm so proud of them. I can see I'm firsthand seeing the sacrifices that they're making because my mom was out there making those same sacrifices. So it was hard. It was definitely really hard. But now that I'm in the, a leadership position and can be a community le leader, community servant. Wow, it's hard. It's hard to make these decisions, and it's hard to not only be a professional, not only be an example, not only be a mentor, but to be a person, to make yourself happy, to fill your own cup. It takes a lot of um, just mental strength, and I think maybe that's why she's in the mental health field now because she knows the importance of taking care of yourself, taking care of your loved ones, not overextending yourself, not saying yes when you want to say no. But being a leader, being a mentor, um, there's so many people in this community that know my mom because she's helped them 
She's opened a door for them. She's taken a chance on them. She's given them an opportunity to grow themselves as a professional, as a person, as a family member. She's she's everything. <laughs> well, I know you just said, um, you know, to give you a chance to be a leader in this community, Sierra. You are a leader in this community, and I'm sure that you've probably had a little spirit like you have from the beginning, or, or maybe you have it. And this is the opportunity for mom to tell me a little bit more about your daughter. Well, I'd love to tell you more about her. And I, it, it's just a moment of where she's at and enjoying it. Because as she mentioned, you know, it was her and I. And then I met my husband who came with a lot of children and then we had a child. So it went from just her and I to a big family and finding our way. There's things I think any parent would say they would do different, but she was always a shining star. She just didn't believe it. And I think that's what happens with women. Unless somebody really says it in a way that resonates with you, it's hard to believe it. You know, you, you question yourself and I think the important part with her and where she's at in her life is to give herself grace. No one gave me that. No one said, it's okay if you don't go to this tonight. It's all right if you say no. I thought I had to do everything. And I didn't know how to set limits, which took me away from her. Right. And so, um, you know, it's, it's just a beautiful journey to see where she's at because she's where I always knew she would be as a mom as a friend, as a mentor, as a colleague, you know, it's it's inspiring to see how the community has changed, especially with women of Toledo, that you're someone who I don't know all those years ago would have been in my life to help me. And I'm blessed that she has this network of, of truly inspiring women who are not out to take her down. Right. And that's what I felt a lot of times was that people wanted whatever it was that I had, which usually was nothing, but it was perceived power or position and things like that. And so I just tell her, you know, just still tread lightly sometimes because when you're around a lot of people with a lot of opinions, it's hard to navigate. Right. And sometimes you can't take it back. And so those are things I had to learn. And I've as her mom have tried to guide her in that way and it's it's funny because she'll say you know you were so right when you told me this that or the other thing and I say yeah think yeah we never realized that yeah yeah and so I mean like with any parent and you you don't you try to give your kids the tutelage that you were you learned through trial and error and so it's been really fun to see because now she'll ask me for my advice and and my opinion and that's um like Take it if you want it, or if you just want me to listen, I'll just listen. I don't have to have an opinion about something. I can I can be there for you. And so it's been, you know, when you're uh, a new mom, it's the beauty and the awe of having this little one. And then you're thinking, will I break it? You know, will it? Will I lose it? <laughs> and then as they start to see the world, you you're just watching the beauty of growth and development and all of that. And then every stage of life it just becomes more beautiful right i mean you love them when they're babies but i love them when they're like this too where we can hold hands and and take vacations together travel sing and spend time together so deborah you're such a a amazing human in our community and you do such great work for other people i know that was a, a long road to get there what what kept you going I mean, so many women in your position, single mom, um, being told that you you can't, um, you know, we we pause sometimes and and believe that. What what kept you going? And I think it's it comes from the foundation. I had really strong parents who worked really hard. And, you know, we talk about work ethic and there are so many different people that say different things about a work work ethic. But. I got to see that good foundation and there were a lot of doors shut on me and I just didn't let them stay closed. I just kept pushing. You know, I worked at the University of Toledo, looked for promotion opportunities and it would be, you don't have a master's degree, went back and got a master's degree. Oh, you don't have budgeting experience. 
I said, give me a budget. Let me let me manage a budget. Then it was, well, you don't have any supervisory experience. So I said, give me some students and I'll supervise them all day long. And then I just said, let me open a different door. And I moved on. And I think that's where women today have to understand their self-worth, but it doesn't happen overnight. We all bring um, things to the table, but it takes time to hone those skills and you can't start out right away saying and, and demanding things right you have to prove yourself sometimes unfortunately and so it it's been like that kind of journey and just honestly it's the people and the impact you know every day I want to do something different more we have this need we have that our community should do this you know I want to revitalize Ashland Avenue from the Thomas Wernert Center all the way down to Scott High School because people should be able to walk in a neighborhood and not be afraid right or trip over glass or broken down sidewalks. That's my next thing I, I want to get done. <laughs> I, I think you will. Um, Sierra, back to you. Um, I know a lot of your amazing qualities um, have come in from your mom. Explain what your favorite quality is that you have that she's given you. She is such a prolific leader. She is so not only professional, but organized in the way that she facilitates her staff, her programs. But my favorite quality is her zest for life. We giggle, we have fun, we take vacations, we enjoy ourselves. You can do all this all day and night, all day and night, but until you can sit back and enjoy and say, wow, we've made it, you know, you're just going to keep going and you're going to burn out. Right. And mom, look at Sierra and you tell her what your favorite thing is about her that she has taught you. Well, first, I thought she would say my sense of fashion. <laughs> but, you know, honestly, it is like her wit. She has amazing, you have amazing wit. <laughs> she makes me smile. And that just, I, I love people with a sense of humor. I love people that don't take themselves so seriously. And it's really helped through challenging times to be able to sit back and kind of laugh at ourselves. I mean, I could go on and on. Her eyes are beautiful. Her soul is beautiful. Um, her compassion. I, there's so many amazing qualities, but it's like we just are like yin and yang when we're together. I don't want to say Thelma and Louise because they went off a cliff, but, <laughs> you know, we... Um, we traveled on this one trip and it was quite a journey. I think we took seven planes to get one place and uh, every destination, every stop was just something, something interesting and weird. And we just laugh about it to this time. But, you know, it's um, probably just her soul. She's just inspired. Right. And I can definitely tell now uh, meeting you where that that has come from. Um, one thing I do want to talk about is, you know, there's a lot of single moms out there that listen. There's a lot of mother daughters out there that um, are hearing your story right now. How do you keep this relationship? How do you keep the wit, keep the humor, keep the bond, especially during the tough times? I mean, you, you said it yourself. There were times that your mom wasn't there. There's times that you regret. How do you keep it together as a family? And what would you say to other moms out there who are listening? I think it goes back to giving yourself grace. Not everything is going to be perfect. And any mom, whether they're single, divorced, widowed, anything like that, if you don't have a moment where you feel regret, then I'm giving you permission to have some regret. I could have, would have, should have done this. And I think that um, finding a connection to something like Women of Toledo, I I see that as so valuable in the space of women who may not have a partner, what, however you want to define a partner, but there's a group of women that will support you. And I think that um, we did a lot of work in um, the North End and we were doing Getting Ahead with Women. And the one lady said to me, because we had um, like a curriculum and food and stuff, and she said, you know, this is the only time I get to eat my own food and I don't have to share it with my kids. 
And I said, you know, we take for granted that if you have a rough day, you could call somebody, hey, can you meet me? Can we have, uh, you know, a glass of wine? Can you, you know, talk to me? And we have that network. And you could call 10 people, I'm sure, right now after this and say, hey, I had a rough interview. And you could have people there for you. And so I think that having some support, whatever that looks like, whether it's in the school systems, whether it's in your neighborhood, whether it's Women of Toledo, or joining anything, women need to be supported. Right. And what would you say to the, the, the daughter? That's so funny. I was going to say having giving yourself grace, being humble, and knowing that if a mom is struggling with a child, as long as you're making the right choices and what you think are the right choices, they will get to an age where they say, I was wrong, can you help me? Mm -hmm. She is my support system. Exactly what she just said, after a long day, she's the first person I call. She's the first person I text. I send her memes. I send her little like gifs about how I'm feeling. We giggle and then we just move on because she's my support system. She has been since day one, whether I saw it or not. Now I see it. Now she is that beacon. She is that shining light. If I can just see her, if I can know that she's there, it's going to be okay. That's so beautiful. I know the last thing that I want to cover is both of you have dedicated your lives to others and to community. Why is that so important? And and could you just explain a little bit, um, Deb, of your profession? Sure. So my undergrad is in social work. My master's is in public administration. So I feel like my entire career I've spent working on poverty programs or, you know, trying to reduce stigma for mental illness. And now we've seen the big wave of addiction hitting our community. And so I think that public policy really impacts what happens in our community. And it goes everything from drinking water, you know, look at what happened in Flint, you know, and all the way to welfare reform. And just recently, you know, people were afraid about the government shutdown. If I don't get my food assistance, if I don't get a check, how will I make ends meet? So I don't know what really drew me to that. It's just the need and the desire to help. And I've said that I'm in a position that I can make those changes. It takes a minute and you have to work, but I set the stage for my organization. At the Zeff Center, I am the CEO. I'm running an over $40 million budget with 500 employees and over 32 lines of business. I am setting the stage. My team, we work together, but I am the shot caller. I'm setting it all up and that's powerful, but I don't use it in a way that is destructive. I do it to improve outcomes for our community. You know, we're losing too many people to overdoses. We're losing too many to suicide. We had an eight year old little boy who had intention and a plan to harm himself. And I think that when you, when you ask the one question, my daughter didn't grow up with Kardashians. And a lot of the times parents feel bad that they can't give their kids these extras. It's the extra is their time and attention. Put the phones down. It's hard for all of us. What they really want is time and attention. They really don't need the designer purses, the shoes, all of that, because later on, those will be gone. But did the time matter? Right. And so um, I think that that's the easier part of me being a parent back then. No Kardashians. Um, not trying to bash them. You can cut it out if you need to. But I'm just saying with social media, there's so right. much more exposure to a world that I didn't know anything about. Right. So I didn't know it, so I didn't miss it. But I think that, um, I, I don't know, it's just been, it fills my cup. Right. And then where do you uh, get that giving kind spirit to, to give? Did you hear her answer? Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it, isn't it? She raised me. I talk a lot about privilege and platform. Um, unless you're indigenous to this land, you are an immigrant or you are someone who came from immigrants. There are marginalized communities everywhere. If we can help raise awareness, education, if we can educate, engage, and empower those marginalized communities, whether you are from a different 
nation, different country, different religion, different background, whether you've worked hard your whole life or you're in this position where you have to change gears and now you have to try something new and work hard at that, how can I help you? What can I do for you? What can I provide for you? How can we help you? It's amazing that you know you are what you see and what obviously Sierra has seen is this strong powerful amazing woman who is is built to serve and we are so grateful that the two of you are such a, a strong connection and certainly a connection with our community in closing I just want to give you the opportunity to say just one last thing to each other I love you once I love you twice I love you more than beans and rice <laughs> <laughs> Was such a sweet story. I, I only wish you guys could see the emotion that was in the room and that they held hands the entire time. I am a firm believer that I'm a strong woman because I was raised by a strong woman is a perfect example of these two ladies. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you to our guests, Miss Deborah Flores and Sierra Ortiz, my executive producer, Chris Pfeiffer, I'm Mary Brucker, your host, and this is Women and What We Do. If you like what you heard, go to wgte.org slash what we do. And remember, speak up. We do. WGTE. Voices around us. WGTE is supported in part by American Rescue Plan Act funds allocated by the City of Toledo and the Lucas County Commissioners and administered by the Arts Commission.